because that is one of the main factors. If he can deny or delete Clay on the E, for example, automatically things are different. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to dive in for game number four into the land of dawn for RRQ Hoshi versus Onik Esports. This time, Kyrie on the killing spree. Albert opting to go for that killing spree as well. Quite a similar situation from the previous game where Onyx Esports, they should have the better early game in terms of that mid control. And you can see once again that being directly reflected with how aggressive Keyboy is playing. He is trying to put some pressure onto Albert in that jungle. It hasn't amounted to much so far, but expect the same type of aggression and flow from Onyx Esports in the early game. On the top side, R7 will have a bit of a sustained advantage right there with the shifting quicksands, and that will allow him to actually match the sustain for, from Esmeralda for the while at least. And we can see the Keyboy already taking a lot more damage, a lot more fight compared to game number three earlier. So Arc Hoshi, they have a bit more chance to actually match Onik in the early game department. We'll have to see though, the solo performance from the side lanes will be so critical in ensuring the tempo and pace of the game. Onik Esports, with their composition, I'm trying to think about the matchups here again, right? This Paquito should be able to have a little bit of an edge against the Lancelot, but it all really depends on Kyrie, right? How flexible, how mobile is he on this Lancelot? Time prediction by Axe, though. Here, oh, on the English <laughs> cast, every single one of us gone for RRQ. Makes sense, right? Because when we think about the engage tools from Onyx Esports, it can be denied with the composition that RKO she has brought to the table. Oh. Ooh, almost CW getting chunked very low here as Vin is circling towards that bottom side, helping Skylar a little bit in that lane. But remember, two seconds left on the next turtle to spawn, and Onyx Esports seem to be the ones to set up first. They have control here in RRQ. They're pushing boots away though, so R7 will be able to participate, and Keyboy gets chunked by Albert. Has the guy to win, getting back to Ooh. R7 though. It's only Kyrie away, dealing so much damage, forcing the Phantom Execution here, but it's gonna be oh. Kyrie, who still, still is able to steal the turtle here. First blood over to Albert, traded in one for one. Man, Kyrie is a menace. What is that retribution? Has he missed a single retribution? He has a few, but in total, like the percentage. It's so high. It, what? Where did this guy come from? Philippines. The Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quick answer for us at the English desk. <laughs> but looking at the emblems here, Avarice on three members, they want to scale. Scaling and the side lanes is important for them. And this is a bit of what RQ was doing, right? Strong mid lane and jungle presence, but weak presence in the side lanes. This is going to be a chance for RQ to replicate the same outcome that Onik was able to get. And if you look at the Festival of Blood for R7, he's gonna be a lot more aggressive. And we saw the amount of damage he can do if he is left alone with anyone squishy, including Kyrie. Let's see, once again, it's Kyrie who gets it here. Sans though, gonna be popping that black shoes. Isley bursts it down. Now Blast popped in. Kyrie able to dash, going for the puncture. Nope, just goes for the Thorn Rose. Whew. Disengaging. On Esports down below, CW is looking for that clear. Has the BMI back. Ooh, RQ almost, almost actually caught that, predicted that. Didn't grab it though in the end. Exonic CW was able to get out. You guys though can grab food with the 90% discount code grb.to slash mpl. And you can also go scan the QR code. QR code, not barcode. QR code. Remember that, Mirko. That's Don't you. make the same mistake. Yes. Mm -hmm. Turn up. So we give the same mistake though. Argo oh, should be a lot better, but now Keyboy, very low end. Skylar goes in, forces the flicker. And a big point here Argo Hoshi has more crowd control when it comes to those slows, but as a response on esports with three sprints, they will be able to move away from that real population a lot more reliably as RQ is still maintaining their pressure. So they have the guiding win from Matilda, they have additional speed with the spells as well. It's gonna be difficult, no, for RQ Hoshi to look for an end gauge at this stage. It depends if uh, R7 lands a massive raging sandstorm, that can actually be a big deal. Numen and Blast as well, but Finn now is the main target for Onyx Esports. Oh, real world inflation. Kyrie still able to get out with the guiding win. CW gets out with a battle mirror image. Practically a free turtle over to RRQ unless Kyrie can somehow steal this again. No, he's just walking back into his own jungle. RRQ will be able to secure this one. And that's gonna be the gold lead shifting a little bit over. Yeah, just down to equal once again. 100 gold, one minion will be able to equalize that. So it's still very equal four minutes in, five minutes in the game. 
Yeah, 50-50 right now. One for one turtle as well as Kyrie was able to get the first one. And Albert now on the second one without too much of a difference in this gold lead. Is there any significance that we should see from the items, Arashi? Have to see for R7. If you don't pay attention, <laughs> this man is going to delete you. But CW oh. deleted gold buff. He only has the Demon Hunter sword, but he's able to get that. No, Vin is a target. He is still very tanky. A decent amount of items available, but look at Albert. Ooh, 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 ooh. Happy feet. Happy feet. Sans. He's Sans. means chill in <laughs> Indonesia. Um, Albert and both Onyx Esports and RQ right now. I think for both teams, they're happy to actually play it slow, right? They have uh, scaling options towards that late game. CW with that gold buff steal and with the Avarice should be able to actually farm a little bit more efficiently. Oh, oh. A good snipe though from Skyler as Vin goes in for the stun, but he was a bit too uh, sustainable to actually die from that kind of poke or to actually even get taken low by that kind of poke. This is three members though, already setting up from our Arki Hoshi in this bottom side. They are starting to rotate and shift their focus, but let's see what they can do with it. Keyboy reads this out really well, giving information to CW as well to play a little bit more safely, but you can see the rotations from RQ now as Albert and R7 already here in this bottom side. RQ trying to get the bush control, ensuring that they can trap Onyx Esports. That has been how they were able to get all these very valuable pickups in the early game in the previous game. So if they can control the bushes and the control on the map, that is something they can do. But look at Boots going in. Is that a mistake though? Raging Sandstorm over. Yeah, not really that much they can really do if it's Boots, right? Uh, has a sprint, very sustainable. That's why Onyx Esports went for that pick. Still, both teams playing it slow, waiting for that objective. No real reason to actually go for fights here without any objectives on board. And here, it's going to be RRQ who actually sets up for it first. r is looking for that flank. Once again, Sans looking for that opening. Kyrie is finally joining his team here. Keyboy jumps in with the guiding win. Now onto Vin. Real world inflation to that black line. Trying to zone Kyrie away. So that's going to be Thorn Rose Pop. This CW comes in with a blazing duet. And that's going to be a lot of damage. It's going to be Albert who secures the turtle. Vin flickers out. Gets the new round blast. Clay taken down by Kyrie. Vin running away. And that's the damage to take Boots down. Ooh. A two for one in favor of RRQ because they stole the turtle. They got the turtle. Skyler stole that lethal as well from CW. Man. Very aggressive plays from both teams, and look at how chaotic the fights are, right? There's no real front line. Everyone is in between each other, and it come, when it comes to that, the team with more sustain, the team with more AoE will usually come out on top. CW now with the Golden Staff, he will be able to do a lot more damage in those clumped up team fights. Boots and Sans as well. More security and more ways to combo. And even Kyrie with the Lancelot, right? If he can land the spells on multiple members, that is huge value that Archer Hoshi cannot replicate. Power spikes from Onyx Esports are starting to show with the itemization they have also opted for. There is a slight gold lead for RRQ here in the 8th minute, but other than that, things are looking pretty equal. In a sense, RRQ Hoshi is able to get a little bit more because they're able to get that tower in that bottom side. And so far, Onyx Esports has not been able to get any trades for that. No trades, and that's not good for Onyx Esports. They will require Vision to set up for those big combos later on. Right now, Kyrie making the big plays happen, and Clay oh. deleted. Phantom execution, might as well call it perfect execution when the Lancelot's on Kyrie's hands. Thorn Rose coming again, again, that's the double kill for Kyrie. He's getting out of the Raging Sandstorm as well. Looking for the oh. again, or seven is able to sustain back up. Skyler dealing the damage to help his XP laner. Onyx, Esports, Kyrie styling on that Lance. They're just trading at this point, right? Argyle was able to get a tower on the bottom side and then Onyx Esports from nowhere. Kyrie able to get two members off the board from RRQ Hoshi and the trades don't stop there as they are going to be able to get a tower in that top side. Boots just being a menace in that top side, not allowing the Khalid, not allowing R7 to rotate anywhere. Just really pinning him, him to that lane, giving pressure constantly. And it's a really good setup, seeing that Onyx now, they do want to get this Lord. Vin stunning Keyboy up again. Sustainable, sustainable Keyboy has that guiding win. Can regen as well, but RRQ puts their focus into the mid lane. Getting a little bit of clear before they go for the concealed play in the bottom side. CW is wide open. The stun comes in. The damage comes in as well from Skyler. Pushing him down. CW gets out with that battle mirror image with the sprint as well. R7 the Raging oh. Sandstorm, <gasps> but the guiding win from Keyboy helps CW escape. Kyrie with the final execution now jumping on the Skyler with a Thorn Rose as well. Gets stunned up. Still able to get out from that one. Boots jumps in. R7 as well doing a lot in the back line. R7 will be the one taken down by Kyrie.
RRQ losing in this skirmish. One man down, and Onyx Esports are going to have a man advantage to get this objective on the board. 2,000 gold lead boots already trying to zone Albert away as Onyx Esports they have their eyes on the prize. Still 40 seconds left, but look at the damage coming in from Albert. A lot of damage, but you can see Araki's reliance on having a definite engage. If Oni is able to maneuver around, uh, disengage and engage again and again, they seem to be struggling to find success, and play now is what opened with the road manipulation. Yes, oh, oh, Tyler! With the steal, he sniped that from across the map! My god! If Kyrie's from the Philippines, Skyler's from Indonesia! Onyx Esports now looking for some trades on the board. How did he achieve that? Onyx were to tunnel vision on Albert. And you cannot give Skylar room to play on this Beatrix. Come on, that was... That was Nobody expected that, right? On eSports, they just knew that they had to focus on Albert because he's the one Whoa. who has that retribution. Oh, and meanwhile, me. out of nowhere, Skylar, with a perfect Renner shot, able to get that away. Even though Kyrie paired it with the Phantom Execution as well, it wasn't enough. Skylar, just a huge problem now. One of the best gold laners here oh in MPL ID. And these are the reasons why. With the longer range right here and the Lord, Araki Hoshi can look to find more value. A keyboy though will be able to escape. The purple buff will be contested. Oh my goodness. Circling Eagle now by Keyboy. Not really gonna be another engage here, but Falling Star actually catches all of them. And CW jumps into the blazing way. Gonna be sniped down though. Our seven taken low, taken down. Kyrie jumps in, Thorn Rose. Taking the kill. Numina blasts off the three though. Albert going wild. Sans still able to survive. It's a three for one. Onyx Esports takes the dub. Three for one trade. Completely worth it for Onyx here. And now they are going to be able to hold the gold lead a little longer because of that end gauge. And here we go once again. Oh, they don't Ooh. stop. <laughs> they really don't Ooh, stop. So aggressive from both of these teams. The longer the game goes, the more damage Skylar and Albert will have at their disposal right now. Kyrie is 6 and 0, oh, but slowly but surely that Lancelot is going to fall off a bit. And the instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. You see that in the beginning, Falling Star and Win a Blazing Duet combo. You can see R7 tries best to try and salvage that fight with the Raging Sandstorm, but unfortunately, it's not possible. Numenon, Bland, uh, Numenon Blast will actually be able to stun everyone, but there's not enough follow up. When Onyx Esports make the fights this sporadic, this chaotic, Araki Hoshi struggles to let their back line, Clay and Skylar, output the damage they need. The, the counter plays from both of these teams are giving me whiplash at this point. What is going on? Onyx Esports now with a 2,000 gold oh. lead. Skylar doing so much damage, Arashi. What are his items? He has the BOD, so. But that was from full HP, so it's not even a factor here. The Malefic Roar, though, will allow him to do so much damage to anyone. Despite all the antique cuirasses and the dominant Isis built by Onyx Esports, that's a lot of penetration coming in. And that is something that Onyx needs to start paying attention to because it already stole the Lord. It can steal one of their HP bars next. Looking at the items for the mage in particular, once this back and forth is happening, Ice Queen's one and Glowing one. Same item for both Sans and Clay, allowing them to have the great mix of DPS, but also that crowd control ability, the slow coming in. For Onik, they have sprints to counter it. Araki Hoshi, they have a lot more dashes. So at this point, it's still pretty much even. Notice Kyrie's items as well. He went for that penetration, um, penetration item mostly. Kyrie again Whoa. using that penetration onto Vin, getting him low. That's the shield down on Esports. Kyrie's actually going to go over to that top side to clear it out. They can actually play this slow. They don't need to take it. Again, they have the lead. R7 is going to be zoned out. No second ability. That's a massive resource. Now, the knowledge over to Onyx Esports. They have this. They also have that top side cleared out. They can play around the Lord a bit better. Hmm. They're going to be able to clear fast, though, as you can see Albert being able to clear that and alleviating the pressure that once was already placed onto them in that top side. And right now, CW and Skylar are already the same level. But at this point, if both of these teams have both of their ultimates up, who's gonna favor in a 5v5 situation? Only Esports has more combos, but Araki Hoshi, they have a lot more poke damage available. Renner combined with that Yeev damage, and especially with that Yeev slow, that is a dangerous combo that Onyx Esports are very wary about. They don't stand out in the open just in case the snipes keep landing and they're forced to back away. They're playing in the vision, uh, with the vision in the bushes, trying to make sure that they are the ones making it confusing for Araki Hoshi and the macro play allows them to secure a turret. 
Arki Hoshi though, trying to try and get compensation, but it won't be easy against Onyx Esports. Again, Onyx Esports. The dancing. Yeah, they're they're fine going doing this dance. Again, they have the 3,000 gold lead. There's not much that RQ can really do. And guess what? If Onyx keeps on micromanaging the waves like this, they have the edge. They'll always have the edge, right? RQ though, not gonna give it over just like that. They go for the conceal. Good disengage. Good read from Onyx Esports. Just backing up. And again, playing this Lord Dance. Kyrie, oh, kind of execution. Was popped in. R7 getting melted down by CW in the mid lane. Has to pop the second ability. CW gets out as well. This might be the opening for Onyx Esports to again go for the Lord Dance. There's a chance for Arky Hoshi to zone everyone away and then use the damage output from the Beatrix to solo the Lord. That is a strategy that we've seen work out. But right now, Onyx are the ones threatening to actually take it away. They're trying to force Arky Hoshi into a weird fight and keep your eyes on CW, man. He is going to be one of the main damage dealers in those big team fights. Let's see, once again, mid lane control from both of the teams. Kyrie has already rotated over to the Lord. Enhanced Lord here in the 16th minute of the game. Finn, off position, goes in for a stun. Battle mirror image, and that's going to be a lot of damage placed onto Finn. Albert doing the same to Sans. Boots just trying to zone RRQ away. Vin's super low, but on an eSports side, once again, that they do not want to commit. They have that bottom side slow pushing, so they don't really need to worry. All they need to do is, again, set up for that top side, mid lane as well, and get the better position to actually go for another Lord Dance. Because look, slowly but surely, because on eSports have been doing this, the gold lead has actually been rising. It was at 2.9K at the start, and now it's on eSports with 3.5K. The micromanagement of waves from on eSports Absolutely phenomenal. They nearly lost the turret in that top side for it as well. And bot. They have to be very careful at this point, right? Because if it keeps on going, it doesn't matter. Like you mentioned, for Onyx Esports, they're going to get more trades on the board in terms of that tower, and they're going to have more lane control because of it. But now, it seems like Arkyoshi, they're going to start it. They are. They need to go for it, right? It's, it's a desperate play here by RRQ. Vin got knocked up by the Lord. Revealing his position, but it's gonna be the Conceal coming in again. A good stun over to Kyrie, but Kyrie's still able to dodge away with a Thorn Rose. Now that's gonna be the Battle Mirror Image onto the back lines. The CW just wreaks havoc onto that back line. Kyrie looking for the plays. No members take him down. Only Sans. Kyler! Kyler will Boots, finally fall to the hands of Boots. It's a one for one right now. Albert getting out, but the damage coming in will stop him. Kyrie shuts Albert down. He's looking for another right now. He goes on to Vin. Doesn't have the puncture just yet, goes over to Thorn Rose, and that's the kill over the boots. R7 sustaining, but Onyx Esports have taken the three for one. Wow, the way that Onyx Esports played that team fight was so well done. They know that RK Hoshi are gonna be reliant on the end gauge and the damage coming in from Skylar, and Boots was able to just chunk him down up until his in elimination entirely. Boots was a huge factor to how they won that. Wait. What? 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 Did they reset the Lord? Oh, they're waiting for the Evolved Lord to wow. spawn here. There you go. Onyx Esports once again. Absolutely. A level a step ahead. Absolutely cerebral gameplay by Onyx Esports right here. And now Sans with the Winter Truncheon, he will be able to oh, even no. to buy even more time. They didn't do it enough. And I think they were initially going for that, but they noticed that the death timers were a bit still too mm. fast in the 18 minutes. So they decided to just, you know what, let's Take just it. finish it off. It got back to half HP. But hey, it's still a lord here for Onyx Esports. Right now though, has Claws has been built by Skylar. So in the same event of the previous team fight, if the Esmeralda is going to be hounding him, just chasing him down like that, he'll be able to actually survive for a lot longer and maybe even out-sustain the Esmeralda damage because it's not burst by all means. And I think right now, the struggle here is for R7 to match the impact that Boots has been able to do. Bigger engages, tankier, and of course more mobility. The Khalid is getting outperformed by this Esmeralda. It is. The mobility is the only thing that R7 has on this Khalid in favor of the Esmeralda, but that's even just very close. CW, again, meanwhile CW in the top side taking that turret, base turret down now. Skylar on that Bennett. Just trying to clear the Lord as fast as possible. They do take it away in Ooh. the end. Only one base turret falls. Onyx Esports doing a fine job. And this is just typical Onyx, right? When they get the lead, it's just so hard to actually take the lead back. You need to go for a fight. But at this point, with the amount of disengages that Onyx Esports have, it almost feels impossible. Especially with the additional sprint, right? So a lot of things are factors here as to why Arki Hoshi can't seem to engage on a proper team fight. And if we take a look at the player's gold here by UBS, Clay is so far behind as well. And did it reflect on the items, Arashi? 
I think he was having uh, issues trying to maintain his mana levels because we see Sans is able to spam out more spells than Clay is able to. And part of why they went for that big fight, I think, is because Clay was slowly but surely losing out, running out of mana to deal with because he's been spamming out so many spells, trying to open up the bushes, finding vision, finding information for Araki Hoshi. So in the next fight, I'm not quite sure what they are planning to do. I think if they actually try and go for an engage and then transition to backpedaling instead, they already know that CW and Kyrie they want to get close, right? There's no need for them to chase in that far for the members of Onyx Esports. But now with the gold advantage, it's a completely different story. They might not even be able to deal with Kyrie diving in towards that backline. 7, 0, and 3, fifth level 15. Maybe if they delay the game long enough, then this gold difference will start making less and less of a difference. But then NOD has been built for Clay, understanding the amount of shielding available for Onyx Esports. And the DHS as well, from Skyler, right? And I was about to say that, uh, Arashi. The later the game goes, this gold lead will have little to no impact. Again, with everyone having those full items, but R7, this is it. This is a poke from Sans on a signature hero, right? RRQ right now, they're going to have to contest for the Evolved Lord because I don't, I, I can see them defend this, but I don't think they're going to be able to save those last two base turrets if Onik gets the Evolved Lord this time. They're trying to go in, trying to actually scout for information. Vin has been able to come into the danger zone, but for the most part, the lower half of the map is still under control of Onik Esports and RRQ Hoshi. They're struggling because again, Anyone they jump on most likely won't result in a fight anyways. They will let Skyla clear the bottom side, which is going to be pretty good. And the Lord, given this late stage of the game, is going to be very, very tanky. It's going to take a, quite a bit to burst down. So both teams need to be very careful in how they want to approach this Lord take. Half HP, Vin looking for the flank here. Goes into the bush. Going to be spotted out by CW. And that's going to be the invisibility running out. Boots going to be stunned up. Vin popping up that shield. On Esports with a very good read, we'll just go for the reset on this Lord right now. RRQ do not want that to happen. No, they do. But again, right, this is on Esports playing the smart game. The top side is slow pushing because that base turret was taken down earlier. R7 is going to have to micromanage that and on Esports can just go and again, threaten the Lord and go for the engage. Man, going to be taken down. Skyler caught, has to flicker to get out with a blade armor. Will do its work. Boots gets the kill and Keyboy will be able to find Vin. Not just yet. Boots going to be taken down, over committing there, but he buys enough time for on Esports. The rest of the members to go for the Lord. Kyrie secures it. Alfred jumps in with the damage with the truncheon as well, but will be taken out. He has the immortality. R7 goes in for the damage, but it will not be enough to save Albert. On Esports once again with a brilliant macro performance. Keyboy canceling the regen. R7 now caught in the mid. Thorn Rose as well. Immortality out. R7 buys the winner truncheon. He buys a little bit more time, but will fall again to the hands of Sans. Three for one. Onik looking to get match point. Do they think, do they, will they be able to defend this one, right? Two members left standing here for RRQ Hoshi with brilliant plays from Boots in particular. He was taken down, but I do believe it was worth it to trade for a gold laner as you can see Kyrie going in for an end gate. Kyrie just going, oh, stacking up to go for the base. Onik Esports with match points. One game away from the title. That is crazy. The way Onik is able to maneuver around, avoid fights, yet somehow stay in range to actually deal damage, that is something that RRQ has shown to be unable to deal with. If they need to ban some things, I think now is a time where they have to start banning all these tools that Onik is using to abuse their engages. 